Would you look at the time? It's time for another video. Good day to you fellow adventurers throughout time and space. It is I, the cowardly time lord, willing back to Let's Read My Stories, Part 9. A spin-off tale. Prologue. The universe might have been reset at the end of the origin, but there are still a few who remember their adventures with the electronic. Shortest prologue ever, I know. Chapter 1. Poets Return to Skyrim. This chapter is a little odd, to say the least, because it's Poet's Diary, and I don't even know if I really feel comfortable reading this chapter, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Hit it with your best shot. Day one, after having my adventure with Electronic, despite what one would think, I had fun during the short time I spent with Electronic and his group. After all, he told me things that will help me a lot, a lot, but first I must know that when I leave that there will be no loose ends. Day five, after having my adventure with Electronic, I started to build a machine to resurrect Lydia. Day fifty, after having my adventure with Electronic, I have finally resurrected Lydia using black and white magic. Mirror helped me with those. Vampire blood from Serana. And finally, some of my own ingenuity. Day hundred, after having my, my adventure with Electronic, my technology is better than I thought. The resurrected Lydia, which I'm starting to call the Cybergeist. Yes, yeah, Cybergeist will kept keep coming up every so often until it's finally explained what a cybergeist is and i just love that name it's from a video game i played cybergeist i mean what a cool name for an enemy right a cybernetic ghost cybernetic poltergeist that sounds terrifying and also awesome at the same time Slept when, yeah, this is where it gets weird. Slept with gun, is now a child. I was able to find out of this thanks to some of my own technology. Day 150 after having my own trailer, I was starting to build a machine that can detect and take me to anomalies in the space time continuum. Day 200 after having my adventure with Electronic. I'm starting to think there's something in the water. Val, Serana, and Freya are all with child. For Val with Farkas' child, Serana with Mirak's child, and Freya with Vath Firehall's child. Day 2,920. Don't ask why there's such a large date gap. And also, it kind of makes sense. Like, I use some calculations to come up with these numbers. These numbers aren't just... After having my adventure with the electronic, I've completed the machine that will take me to anomalies in the space-time continuum, but I should wait for a few years because I have found out I'm with... Oh, there I am, son. Also, all of this is technically not not stuff that I made up. Some of this stuff is from other people's fan fictions. So, take that as you will. Sorry to people who I robbed your ideas from your fan fictions. I just needed certain ideas for my story and your fan fictions were perfect. Day 3,650 3, after having my adventure with Electronic. That's probably the easiest one to figure out. I've put my baby under the care of Misha, Sophie, and of course Aram. I shall start my solo adventure tomorrow. Day one after starting my solo adventure. I have said goodbye to all my friends and told them that I don't I told them I don't know if or when I will be back. Day five after starting my solo adventure. I appeared in a place called Quaos. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That's both me and the character saying that. But I left there quickly. It was just too strange. Day 100 after starting my solo adventure, I appeared in a small town called Hill Valley where I met a strange man. His name was something brown. He seemed to be working on a time machine. I gave him a few tips and was on my way. Weirdest tie-in ever, but it will make sense in a minute. Day... 401 after starting my solo adventure. I have made a potion that allowed me to live forever. And I drank it before really thinking about it. Day... 730401. After starting my solo adventure. The next place that I get to that does not involve the Akachalas or the Pi team. 
I'm staying. I mean, how many times can the same group of people run into anomalies in the space-time continuum? I can't handle another day with them, even though I shall miss that madman with many faces and a blue box. I remember when we first met, even though that's very hard. For, very hard. Immortal life with finite memory? Not very easy to remember things. That's a reference straight to Doctor Who, even if you ignore the blue box and madman part. He asked if I was human. I said yes. He didn't believe me. He checked if I had two hearts and or a special clock that then after he was satisfied with that, he asked me what year and what planet I was from. So I answered truthfully, Nern, 10th year under Queen Val of Skyrim. He laughed his head off at that remark and then said that he knew that there was a massive technological boost after Val became queen, but I hadn't realized that it went as far as time travel. You are one smart person, poet. Of course I asked him how he knew my name. He said that you are the most famous person to talk about besides Val for over 2,000 years on Nern. Who boy. Day one after starting my new life. Uh, I appeared in a place called The Wasteland. Also, I've come up with a false name to live under. I am no longer poet. I am now Moria after the first Dwarven Ruins Val took me to and took me to the mines of Moria. Brown after the strange man I met all those many years ago. Moria Brown. See, I told you it makes sense. Here's where you laugh. You laugh now. It's clever. Day 100 after starting my new life. Sometimes there's just not going to be spaces in between words. I don't know why, but... Every time I try to post a story on Wattpad, that happens. So I'm just going to ignore it. Of all the people I could have run into, I ran into Sign Caster, but I could tell that she hadn't been, she hadn't had the adventure with Electronic yet. And now I understand why I'm here, to protect my descendants and a new future. This isn't the end of my story. This is just the beginning of Moria Browns, which is never touched on again because this story is all about Sign Caster. After the Origin Chapter 2 Siren Caster and Time Bomb After the Origin So Siren, I've been thinking about what Electronic and Rubber said about us. I think it is about time I told you something. I age slower than the normal person. People used to joke that my mother was a vampire or something. Of course, the people who first made those jokes have already died of old age. Said Time Bomb truthfully. That doesn't matter to me, Time Bomb. Besides, I might be able to make it so you age normally, said Siren Caster truthfully. Really, Siren, you would do that for me? Asked Time Bomb. Sure thing. Anything for you, said Siren Caster truthfully. So, Siren, will you mar marry me? Asked Time Bomb nervously. Yes, Time Bomb. Yes, said Siren Caster happily. Way to go, Time Bomb, said Copper, Sarah Lines, Veronica, and Davy happily. Bark, 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 Quasar and Rex happily. Eh. Knock, knock. Who is it? Or a siren caster. I have a letter for a siren caster of the wasteland, said a man. Okay, well then let me see it, said siren caster. Hello, siren. If you've gotten this letter, then everything is going according to my pl to my final... That should just be final plan. I don't know why it says my finally plan. My final plan... You will only be able to trust those who arrive at your wedding, and if that happens, you should receive another message from me. Electronic. Sir, where did you get this letter? asked Siren Caster. A woman gave it to me when I was a little boy and told me to bring, give it to you right here, right now, said the man. This is interesting, said Siren Caster. Knock, knock. Who is it? asked Poet. I have a letter from Moria Brown of the Wasteland, said a man. Who is it from? asked Poet. Don't know. To the man. Okay, let me take a look at it, said Poet. Hello, Poet, or should I say Moria Brown? Anyways, you have to get to Siren Caster's wedding in New Vegas. Trust me, it is important. Hey, where did you get this letter? A woman gave it to me when I was young and told me it was important to give it to you right here, right now, said the man. Very clever, Electronic. If I ever see you again, I'll have to thank you for all the tips about the future, said Poet. Siren Caster, can I... Siren... 
That just is said Siren. It didn't really say Siren Caster. I'm just so used to saying both. Siren, can I ask you something? Asked Davy. Yes, Davy, what is it? Asked Siren Caster. Siren, I was just wondering if I could invite my mother to your wedding. Said Davy. Sure, Davy. Why did you think you had to ask? Well, you see, she is a cyborg and isn't the prettiest thing. Said Davy. That's all right, so long as she isn't uglier than copper. <coughs> ha ha, too true. Too true, Siren, said Davy, while laughing nervously. Siren, could you help me with something? Asked Tom. Sure, Time Bomb, what is it? Asked Siren Caster. Uh, it has been a long time since I had to write anything. I was wondering if you could help me write a letter to my parents. Also taken pretty much straight from a fan fiction. Sorry. If you can't tell, I read a lot of fan fiction. I know. Surprising, right? <laughs> Anyways, asked Time Bomb while rubbing the back of his head. Sure, Time Bomb, what do you want it to say, asked Ironcaster. Hey, even though I don't know if you are still alive or if you will even care, but please come see me for a very interesting day, the day I shall be married. Your son, Time Bomb, said Time Bomb. Well, Time Bomb, you don't know how else to put it, do you? Asked Sirencaster, that's correct, said Time Bomb sadly. You don't have to be sad about it, Time Bomb. It is short and s it is short and straight to the point, and that isn't always a bad thing, said Sirencaster. Have you written that letter yet? Asked Time Bomb. Yes, here you go, Na said Sirencaster. Good, now I can send this letter, said Time Bomb while pulling out a vial of mysterious liquid. Time Bomb, what is that? asked Sirencaster. I don't know. All I know is that it came with a note, said Time Bomb while showing Siren the note. If you ever need to contact us, pour this on a letter, said Red Sirencaster. You know, some people said my father used magic, said Time Bomb. I don't believe in magic, Time Bomb, so save a bit of that liquid for me to study. That is, if it even works, said Sirencaster. It'll work. It has to work, said Time Bomb while pouring the liquid on the letter. See? The letter vanished, said Time Bomb. Yes, and there is still enough liquid for me to study. Yeah, said Siren Caster. Sometimes I think you need to just accept the mystical world. After all, how else do you explain electronic or venturian? Asked Time Bomb. Simple, they use a level of technology that is almost impossible to understand, said Siren Caster. Mm. Mumbled Time Bomb as he walked away. Chapter 3. Is this a wedding or a reunion? The day of Siren Tom's wedding arrived, but something strange some but some strange things happened. Whew. Hmm. This is the place, Electronic said in his letter. Wait, is that Lydia? Wait, is that Mirak and Serana? What is going on? asked Poe while running to talk to them. I can't believe we are coming out of hiding after all. You could accidentally burn up in the sunlight, said Mirak worriedly. Oh, it's getting hard to read all this. Why did I decide to make these videos? I don't know. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. We will just we'll just be with them for a day or two, and I will keep my hood up at all times. Wait, is that Poda, Serena? Wait, is that Lydia? Asked Mirac. It's been so long since I went anywhere, and now I remember why. No one can stand the sight of me. Oh well, I might as well get this over with. Wait, is that poet? What is that, Marak and Serana? This is strange, said Lydia. Oh, look, Time Bomb. Looks like some guests have arrived. Is that Moria? I don't even remember inviting her, said Sirencaster. So you're still alive? I can't believe it, said Poet happily. We know. It is amazing how effective vampire blood is, said M Lydia, Serana, and Marak. So how are the others? Asked Poet. Dead, yelled Marak angrily. I'm sorry to hear that, said Poet. Well... I have something to say. I thought I would. I came here for a wedding, not a reunion," said Lydia. "Yeah, is this a wedding or is it a re this a reunion?" asked Mac. Uh, memes. Why do I write memes? No, this is Sparta. Ah, ah! Yelled a random legionnaire as legionary as he was shot in both his knees by arrows. Oh, Lydia, did you really have to shoot him in both his knees before killing him? asked. Mirac, no, but there's a meme quote that has, to be, that has to be filled, said the disembodied voice of Electronic, the author, ha slash the author happily. 
I can't say that happily. I'm I'm too disappointed in my past self for writing that to say it happily. No, there isn't. Wait, who said that? Asked Mirak angrily. Well, Time Bomb, I think it is time we talk to our guest. Wait, that isn't Moria. That is Poet. Said Siren Caster questioningly. I think you're right, Siren. Said Time Bomb. I'll come with you two to see them, said Davy. Okay, Davy, said Siren Caster. Davy, yelled Lydia Avery. Hey, Mom, said Davy. Well, I think some introductions are in order. So also, Siren, before I ask, before you ask, I'm Moria, but that was a fake name. My real name is Poet, and I'm guessing you already figured that. But I am guessing you already figured that out, said Poet. Yes, it wasn't hard to figure out, said Siren Caster. Poet, tell her the rest, said Mirak angrily. Okay, Mirak. So Siren and... So Siren, I am actually your ancestor, and I used to be friends with both Time Bomb and Davy's parents," said Poet happily. "Okay then," said Siren Caster, really enjoying the fact that she has dealt with so many weird things that nothing phases her at this point. I should really pause more often when I'm reading, but I don't. Also, do you guys actually like listening to my voice? Tell me in the comments, because. Now, I don't know if these videos are just annoying listening to me talk for about 30 minutes and reading a story. But this is this is sort of like special commentary on my story that you won't get from anywhere else. Can you please introduce us to the rest of your friends, asked Mirak, Sarana, Lydia, and Poet? Sure, this is Copper, Rex, Quasar, Sarah, and Ver Veronica, a.k.a. Vivi, said, said Sarn Castle, pointing at pointing at each as she called out their names. Poet, do you, you don't think that Sarah and Verona could be descendants of Freya, do you? Asked Sarah, noticing some strange resemblance between Vivi, Sarah, and their old traveling companion, Freya. Yes, I do, but I'll have to run some tests to be sure. In fact, if it is all right, I would like to run some tests on all of you, said Poet Appley. No need, I already ran any sort of test you may need, said Siren and Caster Appley. When did you do that? Asked Time Bomb, Veronica, Davy, Sarah, Lyons, and Copper. While each of you were asleep, I ran, I run tests on you, but don't worry, I ran, I run the same tests on myself, said Siren Caster Appley. Well, Siren, may I see the te results of your tests? As Poet, sure you go, said Siren Caster, happily handing over some tests. Well, Siren and Veronica are descendants of Freya, Copper is a descendant of Val, and Siren apparently Copper is your grandfather on your mother's side, said Poet. What? asked Siren Caster. Yep, said Poet. What? You got all that from just looking at, at the tests? How come I could never see that? asked Siren Caster. Simple. You, couldn't ca you didn't count for the way the... Copper's DNA has been mutated, and you couldn't have figured out the rest of it because you didn't have any knowledge of the rest of it, said Poet. You're right. Wow, I can't believe it. Oh, that reminds me. I was trying to get a message for you. You're welcome, said Siren Caster. That clever future scene, mumbled Poet angrily. Did someone call for Electronic? Well, too bad. He's dead. So you get me instead, saying Spiderly somewhat happily. What do you want, Spiderly, asked Siren Caster. Aren't you the least bit surprised to see me, asked Spiderly. No, I have witnessed and heard so many strange things. It takes a lot more to surprise me than this, said Siren Caster. Darn. Anyways, Doctronic has a message for you. Mm-hmm, <clears throat> said Spiderly. As you know, I am dead. I can only talk to you thanks to Spiderly. Anyways, Akla is evil, and she is after Siren and the rest of you. So that is why I got you to get together, said the disembodied voice of Electronic. <laughs> Mumble Poet angrily. Poet, you are so angry I can hear you in the afterlife. Please calm down. Also, before you explode with anger, I can see and hear you. This is not recorded. Anyways, got to go now before Spiderly gets m too mad at me. Also, sorry for earlier, Mac, but you see, without me, comedy is dead, said the disembodied voice of Electronic happily. Oh, you would not believe how weird that is, said Spiderly. So, Electronic can control you? Asked Siren Caster a bit, mostly my mouth. That doesn't sound fun, said Siren Caster. Trust me, it isn't fun at all, said Spiderly angrily. 
Let's put it in terms you would understand. It'd be like everything Venturian said in your head came out through your mouth and it was it you and it was still his voice, said the disembodied voice of an electronic. Ugh, stop that electronic, said Spirely and Gritty. How horrible. If that had been the case, I would have never survived, said Siren Caster. Chapter 4. Quest for a Key So, Siren, there is something I will need to help protect you, said Spirely. Why are you protecting us, asked Siren Caster. Okay, by protect you, I mean... I mean, killing Accolade, said Spiderly. That makes more sense. Don't you find it odd that it's Accolade and Spiderly? Like, they he both have Ys on the end, but they're totally different sounding Ys. I did notice that now. And because of the character connection between them that you find out later, it makes it even more weird. That makes more sense, said Sarncaster. So anyways, I have a reason to believe that what I need is at a mountain not far from here, said Spiderly. So you want my help, asked Sarncaster. No, you are far too important, said Spiderly. So you need the help of my friends slash family, asked Sarncaster. Yes, some of them, the ones that aren't too important. So who is too important, asked Sarncaster. You, Time Bomb, Davy, and Veronica, and Poet, said Spiderly. Hmm, I guess it'll be alright with me if it's alright with the rest of them. And not to worry, I'll stay here with the ones Electronic considers too important, said Sarncaster. Please, Siren, there's no time. The thing that Spirely's looking for is the only way she'll be able to protect you from Accolade, said the disembodied voice of Electronic. Can't we just hide? asked Sarncaster. Accolade is the protector of reality. How do you hide from that? Disguising yourself as Sullivan Circus? How many people get that reference? And leave it down in the comments. That was... It, it's a reference to a pretty good TV show. Not... It's not called Sullivan Circus. That's not the name of the TV show, obviously. It, that was actually just like one of the last seasons of the show was based around a place called Sullivan Circus. Asked the disembodied voice of Electronic sarcastically. What? Asked Sirencaster. Never mind. Bad joke, said the disembodied voice of Electronic happily. I wish he was truly dead, said Spiderly angrily. Why? Asked Sirencaster. So comedy would be dead along with him, said Spidely jokingly. Okay, well, see you guys later. Hope you find what you're looking for, said Siren Caster happily. Bye, Siren, said everyone except Spidely and the ones that were staying with her. Oh, Poet, you know what to do about the whole problem of Time Bomb and Davy being immortal, said the disembodied voice of Electronic. Okay, well, get on that. What about the other thing? Save that for our return, said the disembodied voice of Electronic. Okay, said Poet. Hey, Siren, I'm guessing you have been trying to make Time Bomb and Davy mortal, but what about making yourself and Veronica immortal? You can do that? asked Sirencaster, so excited that she ignored the fact that she also said Davy and Veronica. Yeah, no problem. How else would have I lived this long? I thought you used time travel, said Sirencaster. I did use time travel for about 2,000 years, said Poet Apley. Okay, time travel and immortal? That is amazing, said Sirencaster Apley. That is just scratching the surface of what I have done, said Poet Apley. Okay, this is the mountain. I, kn I know it, said Spirely Apley. Something has been following us, said Mark Wardley Copper and Sarah. Stay here by this bridge. Said Spirely commanding. Okay, said Sar Sarah Lyons and Copper. If you die, don't worry. I'll personally get Spirely to rebuild the bridge and make it out of copper and rename it Lions Gate Bridge. You won't get that joke unless you're from Vancou Vancouver, British Columbia, probably. Or if you've been to Vancouver, British Columbia, you'll get the joke. But otherwise, you're not going to get the joke about Lions Gate Bridge, most likely. Said the disembodied voice of Electronic jokingly. Electronic, stop that. I don't care about your j bad jokes or even understand them half the time. And I'm pretty sure no one else does either. Said Spiderly angrily. Eh, we are used to this sort of thing from listening to Venturian. But yes, it is annoying, said everyone else. 
Without me, comedy is both literally and figuratively dead, said the disembodied voice of Electronic sadly. He is definitely just like Venturian, said Mirac angrily. Thank you, said the disembodied voice of Electronic happily. That wasn't a compliment, said Mirac angrily. To me it was, said the disembodied voice of Electronic happily. How do you live with him, come to think of it? How did we, e we ever live with Venturian, asked Mirac. That is a question for the ages, said everyone else. Here we are. This cave holds what we need, said Spiderly. You want me to be the one to represent your group when we meet the person who lives in that cave, don't you? asked Mirak. What? How did you figure that out? said asked Spiderly. Simple. Electronic only talks directly to the people that are important to the task at hand, said Mirak smartly. Very good. But how did you know that it was a person, not a thing? said Spiderly. Well, an object in a cave is most likely guarded by someone, said Mirak smartly. Oh, Mirak. This conversation is going to be so much fun with you here, said the disembodied voice of Electronic happily. So the Guardian is ver is someone very smart, said Marak smartly. Yes, indeed, said the disembodied voice. Voice, not voice. What's a voice? I don't know. Voice of Electronic happily. Then I agree, this is going to be a fun conversation, said Marak. Good to see you, Spiderly, and nice to meet you, Marak. But, Spiderly, you aren't needed for this conversation, said Think Tank calmly. Ugh, fine, said Spiderly. <coughs> Good to finally be back in my body, said Electronic Happy while sitting near the stew pot that Think Tank was stirring. Well, technically, you're still in Spiderly's body, but it looks like your body at the moment, thanks to her shape shifting power. Said Tink Tank coverly. Ah, Think Tank, I missed you, and I can't believe you lied to me, said Electronic angrily. I can't believe you bought it. Even though I didn't really lie, I was outside of time and space for some time, and it did take me a while to get home. I just didn't tell you I made a stop or two along the way, said Think Tank cleverly. True, boy, I missed your sense of humor, said Electronic happily. Electronic, does being in Spiderly's body affect your brain? Asked Mirak. No, I just prefer to be weird and not funny when I'm in public. But when it comes to time to have a serious conversation, I am this way. So I talk cleverly. Ah, hiding your true intelligence for when it matters. I can understand that. Are you sure you're not? You are. Are you sure you aren't a villain? Asked Mirak jokingly. No, I am not sure that I am not a villain, said Electronic using a confusing way of talking on purpose. The reason you are saying that is the same reason that you brought me and not anyone else, said Mirak, figuring out what Electronic said quickly. You are correct. Finally, another that understands our pain, said Think Tank. Cleverly. Yes, another that shares our curse, said Electronic. The curse of knowing the future, said Mirak, figuring out what they were talking about quickly. So anyways, Think Tank, the sword key, please, said Electronic. Ah, so you knew that I found it outside of time and space, said Think Tank. Yes, I knew it, would, it was there, the only place it could have gone when Lighter used them to get rid of the cop. Also, you should send another version of the keys of power out of... You should make another version of the keys of power out of my house keys and deliver it to Dusty at the hotel, said Electronic Commandly. I feel a paradox coming on. Very interesting, said Think Tank cleverly. So let me guess. The only way to kill Akle is to use the sword key, which was created by a paradox, asked Mirak. Yes, except there is a problem of how to get close enough to kill her, to her, to kill her with it, said Electronic. Ah, so that is where Siren, Time Bomb, and Veronica and Davy come in. So you plan to kill a member of my family just to get enough power to save the universe? Wow, you really are a villain, said Mirak jokingly. So are you going to be with us or against us? asked Mirak and then Think Tank worried asked Electronic and Think Tank worriedly. I like the plan already, said Mirak happily. Good. You, well, then things are going well, said Think Tank. So is Boat going to give Siren and Veronica her special potions? 
asked Mirak. Well, that is part of the plan, said Think Tank truthfully. So Think Tank, let me guess, you can put up a field that blocks Akalay's powers? Akalay's power, right? Asked Mirak. He is good at this. Wait, did you tell him anything electronic? Asked, Electri asked Think Tank. No, he's figuring it out on his own, said Electronic truthfully. Well, we should be heading back before anyone starts to wonder where we are, said Merak. Good idea, said Electronic and Think Tank. Oh, but before we go, I must ask you two questions, Electronic, said Think Tank. What are they? asked Asked Electronic. What is the meme code and what is the passcode? Asked Think Tank. The meme quota over, no, okay, let me get back to where I was. Over 9,000! And there once was a petty pinching petty part who perhaps was both in front of wherever he played, said the, uh, said Electronic happily. Uh, just need to make sure you weren't a regular shapeshifter. Well, let's get back to the ones waiting outside and then back to Poet and S Siren and the rest said Think Tank commandingly. Speaking of which, what was following us earlier, asked Mirak. You know, I have no idea. But it didn't seem hostile, said Electronic. Okay, then let's go, said Mirak. Okay, allons-y. Sorry about the little bit of French, said, said Electronic as Think Tank and Mirak gave him questioning looks. Chapter 5, Davy and Veronica. Anyways, that's where we're going to leave it off for this episode of Let's Read My Stories. You know, next time we'll just continue reading, and you, if you don't understand how this series works, you're not intelligent enough to be watching them. I'm sorry. Anyways, this is the Cowardly Time Lord. Signing off and saying, have a good day or whatever time it is, wherever you are.